Buddhism has been national religion for 1,000 years, so 1,500 years of time, day opportunities. But Buddhists are 21%, Christian churches 20%, plus 8% Catholics, you know. So that's 28%, which is just really remarkable when you think of it. Uh, and Korean church, as I told you, in 1970s and 80s, Many people dedicate themselves to world missions. They want. They were receiving countries. They begin to pray. It says, "We want to be giving countries, not just receiving countries." And that's what they did. And uh, these young people dedicate themselves, and and they gave themselves to the mission. And they went out. The churches sent out their missionaries, like my church. When I was a pastor of the church, we had up 230 missionaries. We supported one church. That's the way all over the country. And uh, today we have 27, uh, 28,000 missionaries to every corner of the earth in 176 countries. We were receiving countries. Now we decided to be a giving countries. And that's what has happened. We are very, very grateful. We are not perfect country. We are not perfect Christian. We are not perfect missionaries. But we want to serve the Lord to reach out to the world. And once they make up their mind, and they uh, decided to do it, and, and they are doing it. So Korea became uh, number two missionary countries in the world uh, next to United States of America. As you say, you were not a perfect church, perfect uh, servants, so is there anything uh, that the other, like the other, other countries like Ethiopia and other African countries that we may learn from the mistakes that the Korean church <coughs> made? <coughs> and likewise, Yes. I was I was I was going around the cities and uh, when I arrived at the airport, I was looking some young people uh, outside the city. So, regardless of uh, the young people or other concerning other issues, what do we learn from the strings of corinthians when we have got that? What do we learn from the mistakes that the corinthians make? Mm -hmm. <coughs> because we are. We are the strength of Korean church, first was evangelism, the evangelistic heart. Second, uh, prayer is very important. And thirdly, uh, Korean Christians learn to give. Uh, from the beginning, Korean churches became independent churches, not supported by the missionaries, but we, uh, we try to give tithing. And, uh, various kind of givings, and people were willing to give. And, uh, and also, uh, Korean people are uh, the witnessing people, and uh, uh, they, they enjoy witnessing to their neighbors. And these are strengths and sacrifices and all of that. But Korean uh, Christians made a mistake. Uh, I would say, one, they had a hard time being united, which is very important. If there's any place where the revival is needed, it always has to be united. Prayer. That's very important. Unity is extremely important. But Korean church, in a way, failed in this area, and there's a lot of uh, divisions and denominations, divisions, and uh, organizational divisions, and that I think uh, other countries should avoid as much as possible, and recognizing we are already one in Jesus Christ, and accept others, and uh, not to divide. And that's one mistake uh, I have to, to, to uh, point out. The second is that uh, uh, they sometimes they went out to mission field and tried to make uh, uh, the 
the indigenous, the native churches like the Korean church or Korean uh, denomination, which is not right. But even culturally, like Koreans, and those are, I think, not correct. Gospel, pure gospel is okay. But cultural settings, it has to be their own the mission countries. I mean, they, they, their culture should be maintained. And then pure gospel of Christ goes in there, and Jesus goes in, Holy Spirit and Bible, but not Korean cultures. We have to be very careful not to do that. And uh, that's very important. And I met the uh, first Ethiopian missionary in Pakistan, missionary couple, from, from, from Ethiopia. And I was surprised. It says, they are, I mean, this couple says, they came from Ethiopia. says, really? He says, yes, we are the first uh, uh, Ethiopian missionaries. He says, wow, that is wonderful. Now you're starting to send missionaries out and uh, how did you become Christian? I mean, missionary says, you know, when we saw Korean missionaries in our country, we always thought that the missionaries are only white people. But his, his non-white Korean missionaries came to Ethiopia. They gave us hope that, well, non-white can be missionaries. Look at the Korean missionaries. So they decided to be missionary and they came to Pakistan. Well, that is wonderful. I think uh, God gave the commission not only to the United States or Great Britain or anywhere, Western countries, God, God, Jesus gave the great commission to every Christian, wherever. So everybody should accept the great commission as the own, whether you're poor or rich or developed or undeveloped, that doesn't matter. The gospel with the gospel, you reach out your own neighbors, your own people, but also people cross the borders. You know, and uh, we have learned that, but we were not careful at the beginning. But today, it's been already 30, 40 years now. They've learned a lot, and they have been more careful. They they work much better now. I had a great privilege and honor to visit Ethiopia, and uh, I was one of the speakers to the prayer conference at one of the major uh, retreat centers. And I was very much moved and uh, touched, and I was asked to be a speaker when I was there, when I saw Ethiopian pastors and people praying and praising God. I mean, I didn't know why I came, but they, I mean, these people don't need me coming from all the way from Korea. And I saw great fervor, and I really appreciate it. I was just sucked into that prayer meetings, and I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed my wife and I went there. But I have noticed that uh, churches are ruled by the elders, not the ministers. Well, maybe the tradition, but I think young people should dedicate their lives and go to seminaries and be trained with the Bible and theology and missions and pastor and education and, and counseling so that we have to have a professionally trained ministers. And then we have to raise them up to be our leaders so that they can give full time but the skills and knowledge they have learned at the seminary and ordained them as ministers and I think we have to raise them up to lead the Ethiopian churches. I know this is very tricky uh, advice uh, because Ethiopian churches, uh, I noticed, I've noticed led by, uh, by the elders and uh, evangelists or Christian ministers who are just uh, sort of assistant to the elders. Uh, I don't think that's a biblical form. Those who totally gave their life, full time, entire life, dedicate themselves 
to the gospel ministries. And they should be properly trained, highly trained, you know, in a high standard so that they can literally be spiritual leader and give them opportunity to serve and lead the Ethiopian churches. Uh, even if you don't, you may not appreciate that, but I'll just take this as a little advice to consider. It's a great, it's a great, a great actually yeah. advice and encouragement uh, for Ethiopian leaders. Great. So, it's, it's I've wonderful. noticed that. Yeah. I mean, they, they were doing okay, but uh, there were no professional ministers in a full time out. This minister was just assistant to the elders. And the elders decide what to do. They run the church, and these yeah. and we used to just just help us. Yeah. yeah. One more question. It's just personal, but if we if we might get the is useful for the viewers, we we will we will include it in the, the show. But I just want to 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 uh, to ask. Uh, can we imagine? Uh, what Pastor David Kim looks like in the age of young, the age of youth, well, like in the age of 29, 20, 30, 25. When I was in college, I was a fiery revolutionary student. <laughs> and I was one of those students who led uh, April 19th student revolution. I got almost killed three times. I was shot at. I was almost killed three times, and uh, I was faster than bullets, so I didn't <laughs> die. Uh, so I became a revolutionary student, and I went to army, and uh, because we have to go to army. And when I went to army, I saw corruption in the army. I was a revolutionary student, and I saw this corruption in the Korean army. I was just private. I was the lowest rank. <laughs> but I really want to change this army. They, they cure this corruption, get rid of the corruption. So I challenged the top leaders in the army. I was put in a jail, <laughs> but I was successful. My argument was correct. I had all the facts of military corruptions, and uh, the, the commanding general uh, accepted my proposal and changed my infantry division. I mean, that's the kind of guy I was. I was a fiery revolutionary. Then I met the Lord at the age of 25. That changed me. And in fact, I wanted to be uh, another revolutionary uh, leader to change the Korea, the society of Korea. So I wanted to go to America to, to get the education and get a PhD and come back and become a professor at the university and challenge these young people and, and just shake this country, Korea, with that kind of uh, uh, revolutionary mind. But I met Jesus Christ and I began to change. What is important? Importance is not, yes, politics is important, social revolution is important, but I begin to realize winning the people to Christ is important. So I went to a seminary in America, and at the age of 29, I gave myself totally. I said, Lord, I was seeking my will to accomplish. Now from today on, I'm all yours. You tell me what to do. Not my will, but your will, you tell me that I'll follow you and I'll obey you. So from that day of age of 29, I begin to seeking the will of God every day and everything. I wanted to know what God wanted me to do. And, and constantly seeking the Lord. Lord, speak to me, tell me what to do, how to do, when to do, where to do. And I've been following Jesus, and I will follow the, the, uh, the orders from God, step by step. And I have uh, 
been a pastor for 45 years and pastoring in America, two American churches and one Korean American churches, church and then one Korean church. I came back to uh, Korea after 26 years in America as a pastor and professor at the seminary. And I came back and I continued with two things, pastor and seminary, and also various television programs and other mission programs so forth. And uh, now, at the age of 77, uh, I have retired from official responsibilities. Well, you, you don't have retirement from the ministry of Lord's work, but official position, I have retired. Today I'm uh, Pastor Emeritus of Hallelujah Community Church. I'm Chancellor of George Trinity Graduate University. So after I have retired, I am uh, doing most of my time uh, doing television work, four days every day, a week. I was about to ask actually uh, the, 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 the thing that you have raised now. Uh, we have heard that you have retired five years back from the, 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 church. the Hallelujah Church and we we also heard that you you have assigned senior pastor for the church, that church. Uh, so what do you what do you tell us about the success success having the success <coughs> after all these successful years, forty five right. years? Yeah. Um, I believe uh, finding success is uh, finding a wife. The same thing. God has already someone in His plan. So I don't have to worry about it. All I need to do is just find it. Asking God, leading us, to lead us, and pray and pray and pray, seeking the will of God, to find which one of these young ministers are our pastor. It's almost like there are thousands of thousands of girls out there, but there's even one girl is my wife, and I have to find it. Is this the one, or is this the one, or is this one? Finally, when you come to your one, God tell you, that's it. And that's the way I found my wife. And uh, same way, succession, succeeding pastor, exactly the same thing. And I prayed, I think I prayed two years to find that person whom God has in mind. And my search committee prayed one in half a year sometime, uh, fast and prayers. And we all pray together, and finally, God let uh, this Daniel Kim, who is my successor today. When I met him, I knew this was the man. So he's my successor now. I might have a lot of the questions. Uh, <laughs> yes, there are a lot of persecutions in, in Korea first by Japanese police. Japan took over Korea in 1910 and ruled for 36 years. And they tried to force Koreans to give up their language, their culture, and uh, their lifestyle, and even their names are uh, supposed to be changed into Japanese name. And Korean people were forced to worship Japanese God. Shinto God. Korean Christians don't want to do that. I mean, uh, police, Japanese police uh, arrest them and put them in jail and torture them and so forth. So finally, majority of Korean Christians are forced into worshiping Japanese God. But some of the Korean ministers and people refuse to go to Shinto shrine. One of those churches and leaders were my church in North Korea, called Sanjingan Church. And the pastor was one of the top leaders of this Shinto resistant movement. And he was arrested and put in a jail for seven years. And he was so tortured and he was so broken physically, and he died in the prison. 
uh, one year before the Korea was liberated from Japanese occupation. So we have seen uh, the persecution of uh, our leaders, of our parents, and also after uh, 1945, Japan, the Korea was liberated. The Russian communists came to North Korea, where I was. I was born and grew up. They began persecution from 1948 until 1950, when the war broke out. They want to eliminate Christians from everywhere. They've tried to force Christian children to give up and adults and teachers and principals and I was uh, uh, I think fourth I think third grade and uh, my teacher began to find out how many Christians in my class and uh, out of 60 children 80 I mean eight were Christians from that day on the homeroom teacher tried to force us to give up uh, our faith in Christ and going to church. And they arrest us, they beat us, they punished us, and they just did everything possible they could to force us not to go to church. And uh, one by one dropped out. And uh, by God's grace and by the help of my mother, who is a Christian, and uh, out of eight, two boys resisted to the end for three years to go through all kind of physical beatings and and uh, punishment, but two boys stood to to the end, and oh, thank God the other boy was pastor's son, and another boy was me. So I've been beat up a lot uh, by the communist teachers, uh, but thank God the Korean War broke out and I left North Korea and came down to South Korea. So, Korean church has a lot of persecution, a lot of people killed and went to jail, suffered a lot, and Korean church went through that. And, and uh, today we learned how to sacrifice and dedicate our life with a single heartedness, total dedication through these persecutions. እንግዲህ ተመልካቾቻችን ከፓስተር ዶክተር ዴቪድ ኪም ጋራ የነበረን ቆይታ በጣም አስገራሚ ነበር የሚደንቅተትና ነው ኮሪያኖች ያላቸው እዚህ አሁን የምንገኘው ዘስቴት ዩኒቨርሲቲ እዚህ አሁን የምንገኘው ዘስቴት ኒውዮርክ ዩኒቨርሲቲ በሚባል ቦታ ላይ ነን ያለ ነው ኮሪያ ውስጥ እንግዲህ እዚህ የነበረን ቆይታ በጣም መልካም እንደሆነ እንደወደዳችሁ እንደተጠቀማችሁ ከኮሪያ ብዙ የምንማረው ነገር አለ እና ይሄንን ሁሉ እንደወሰዳችሁ ግጠኛ ነኝ በሚከተለው ሳምንት ቀጣዩን ክፍል ይጀላችሁ ቀርባለሁ አልካም ሳምንት ሻሎም